down. Hi guys. It is just a cool, cloudy, dark, gray, yuck, depressing day here in the end times in paradise here in, in front of the uh, overflowing, uh, the overflowing effluent of Sandy's party for the end times. Fine place to uh, bring you the this two-part Doomer headline roundup rant for this gloomy Monday morning in the end times. That would be Monday morning, August 20th, 2018, which I have figured out really is my 35th wedding anniversary. Speaking of signs of the end times, Hambone Little Tail walking down the aisle 35 years ago today. But, uh, we're going to banish that uh, thought from our brains and head into part one of today's Roundup Rant. I hope the wind is not going to ruin this rant too much. Uh, maybe part two I'll go inside for. But we're going to start our climate change Roundup Rant right here on Truth Dig. TruthDig.org to see what's on the mind of my Humpty Dumpty tribe hero, Chris Hedges, today. He's getting right to the point in his uh, rant of the week. Chris is saying goodbye to planet Earth. Bye-bye, planet Earth. I'm just going to read... I'm just going to read one paragraph of this, and then I'm going to come back, well, not me, my little milk toast twin over at Collapse Chronicles is going to come back and read the entire story and put the link onto it and whatnot. So if you want to hear the rest of this excellent story by Chris Hedges, you'll need to go over to Collapse Chronicles and find the rest of this. Let's just read paragraph three. The failure to act to ameliorate global warming exposes the myth of human progress and the illusion that we are rational creatures. We ignore the wisdom of the past and the stark scientific facts before us. We are entranced by electronic hallucinations and burlesque, and burlesque acts including those emanating from the centers of power, and this ensures our doom. Speak this unpleasant truth, and you are condemned by much of society. The mania for hope and magical thinking is as seductive in the industrial age as it was in pre-modern societies. Thank you very much, Chris Hedges, and we will see you over at Collapse Chronicles uh, in, uh, in a few minutes. But we're going to look at some signs of the end times. And I don't know, I'm assuming most of what I'm seeing here today is clouds, but I don't know if you guys, uh, since there's no mention of it on the mainstream media this morning, about how the wildfire smoke from uh, California, and my guess is a lot more from British Columbia, was actually blotting out the moon and the sun uh, right here in, uh, in upstate New York Saturday night and all day yesterday as the smoke from 3,000 miles away uh, if that wasn't enough of a sign of the end times, how about the deadly 40,000 foot high fire tornado that you can find in various YouTube videos, harrowing new footage released by California's firefighting agency reveals the massive fire tornado that led to the death of a firefighter on July 26. The fire tornado was part of the car fire that has so far engulfed 
over 223,000 acres in Northern California. Yep. The, uh, per the report, the fire tornado, quote, was a large rotating fire plume that was roughly 1,000 feet in diameter at its base and managed to reach a height of 40,000 feet. Anybody asking him on Little Tail, what signs of the end times uh, out there? Okay, but of course, the, uh, the, the big news on both the regular headlines and the business page this Monday morning, uh, many versions of this. This is AP's version. U.S. says conserving oil is no longer an economic imperative. Conserving oil is no longer an economic imperative for the U.S. The Trump administration declares in a major new policy statement that threatens to undermine decades of government campaigns for gas thrifty cars and other conservation programs. The position was outlined in a memo released last month in support of the administration's proposal to relax fuel mileage standards. The government released the memo online this month, this month without fanfare. Growth of natural gas and other alternatives to petroleum. Growth of natural gas, otherwise known as methane, and other alternatives to petroleum has reduced the need for imported oil, which, quote, in turn affects the need of the nation to conserve energy, close quote. The Energy Department said in its report, uh, the Energy Department also cites the new decade-old fracking revolution that has unlocked U.S. shale oil reserves, giving, quote, the United States more flexibility than in the past to use our oil resources with less concern, close quote. With the memo, the Trump administration is formally challenging old justifications for conservation, even congressionally prescribed ones, as with the mileage standards. The memo made no mention of climate change. Transportation is the single largest source of climate changing emissions. Yep, that's what the Trump administration is doing in terms of oil. From oil to gas, this is Fox News reprinting a story from the, from the Wall Street Journal. I love it. The Washington, the Fox News picking up the Wall Street Journal. <clears throat> Trump set to roll back restrictions on coal burning power plants. The Trump administration is escalating its effort to revive the flagging U.S. coal industry with a planned move next week to replace restrictive Obama-era climate policies. Uh, for those of you who are not aware of it, I left both my bullshit detector button and my no-shit Sherlock button out in the rain, and I no longer have a bullshit detector button or a no-shit Sherlock button, so you're going to have to decide which button to pick up on your own. Anyway, uh... To replace restrictive Obama-era climate policies with new rules designed to help coal-burning plants run harder and stay open longer. The proposed new rules, which the EPA, uh, which the EPA plans 
to release within days would be the latest in a series of reversals of policies adopted to slow climate change. It would replace the agency's so-called clean power plan for the electricity business with regulations that cede powers to states and could ultimately lead to more heat trapping gases going into the atmosphere. Huh. President Trump has repeatedly promised to support coal, an industry beset by a shrinking customer base, competition, falling prices, and bankruptcies. Hmm. This plan may be his administration's most ambitious effort yet to kill regulations on coal's behalf. There you go. Let's look at a couple. Uh, let's go over to Zombie Island and look at a uh, couple of articles from The Guardian. And this one, they have a, an interview with photographer Paul Nicklin, who's uh, documenting the collapse of the Arctic ice uh, with his uh, series of photographs. Paul Nicklin, quote, if we lose the ice, we lose the entire ecosystem. By the entire ecosystem, he means the entire global ecosystem. Uh, okay, let's just... Uh, we're going to read just a couple of paragraphs out of this interview. A former marine biologist, Nicklin is painfully aware of the future that faces his beloved Arctic and Antarctic habitats if urgent action is not taken. Quote, when people think of sea ice melting, they think of this lifeless substance like ice in a glass, but it's a very complex substrate. You have, to, you have up to 300 species of microorganisms living in the salt brine channels of a piece of sea ice. Close quote. And the collapse of this di biodiversity is one of his main concerns. Quote, sea ice is like soil in a garden. The sun's energy penetrates and you get algae growing under the ice and seaweed, which provides the food base for zooplankton. Billions of pounds of amphipods and copepods are growing under there. And the same with krill. Then you have the polar cod that feeds on the krill. And from there you have beluga whales, narwhals, bearded seals, Greenland sharks. If we lose the ice, we stand to lose the entire ecosystem. Uh, close quote. One more quote here. Since the 80s, the Inuit have not been able to use that bridge, talking about a, uh, an ice bridge uh, that's melted. It's gone. For the first time in recorded history, the entire Greenland ice cap is melting, and he is up there chronicling the collapse of the uh, Arctic ice for anyone who wants to look at his starkly beautiful photographs. Okay, as long as we're over there at the Guardian, what do they have to say here? Halfway to boiling the city at 50 degrees C. 50 degrees C, good Lord, what is that? I think it's about 120 degrees Fahrenheit. Anyway, it is the temperature, otherwise known as the wet bulb temperature, is the temperature at which human cells start to cook. Animals suffer in air conditioners overload power grids. Once an urban anomaly, 50C is fast becoming reality. And then what they do is just paint 
this absolute picture of hell. The Guardian just uh, looking a few years into the future and just going around uh, more and more what these mega cities are going to look like in a few years. Uh, let's see. Where do we... Okay, then we get to what is all of this dystopian Mad Max uh, picture uh, talking about. <clears throat> At 50 degrees C, which is halfway to water's boiling point, and more than 10 degrees C above a healthy body temperature, heat becomes toxic. Human cells start to cook. Blood thickens. Muscles lock around the lungs and the brain is choked of oxygen. In dry conditions, sweat, the body's built-in cooling system can lessen the impact, but this protection weakens if there is already moisture in the air, as there will be uh, more and more moisture in the air. This so-called wet bulb temperature which factors in humidity of just 35 degrees C can be fatal after just a few hours God damn you, to even the fittest person and scientists warn climate change will make such wet bulb temperature conditions increasingly common in India. Pakistan, Southeast Asia, and parts of China. Even under the most optimistic predictions for emission reductions, experts say almost half of the world's population will be exposed to potentially deadly heat for 20 days a year by 2100. And of course, it's uh, India, Pakistan, and the rest that uh, you can, you know, really kiss goodbye as long as we mention the uh, shithole country of India. Several uh, versions of the story coming out of southern India in, the, in Kerala. So we now have more than 320 people confirmed dead in India's newest flood crisis. Pressure intensified this weekend to save thousands still trapped by devastating floods that have killed more than 300 people in the Indian state of Kerala, triggering landslides and sending torrents sweeping through villages in the region's worst inundation crisis in a century. Authorities are warning of more torrential rains and strong winds as hundreds of troops and local fishermen staged desperate rescue attempts in helicopters and boats across the southern state. Next to that story from AP, 800,000 people displaced and flooding in southern India. 800,000 uh, new climate refugees as the wet bulb temperature builds in India this century. Some 800,000 people have been displaced and over 350, according to this report, over 350 have died in the worst flooding in a century in southern India's Kerala state as authorities rush to, br to bring drinking water to the most affected areas. Come here, Sancho, would you come here please? Sancho does not like the smell of the chemicals coming from the plastic shithouse. At least two trains carrying about one and a half million liters or 400,000 gallons of water are moving into the flooded areas. Yep, yep, yep. Can you say cholera? Okay, from the shithole country of India to the shithole country of Canada, what Canada's 
major media are forgetting when they report on oil. Uncritical coverage of industry projections means climate change is left out of the picture. Hmm. When the Canadian Association of Petroleum Producers released its 2018 oil outlook, which predicts major production growth of, of oil in Canada through the year 2035, there was one major detail no one seemed to notice. The projections assume a world where future emissions don't stay within the climate limits set in the goals of the Paris Agreement, not by a long shot. So then they mention all of these, these uh, mass media across Canada covered the report, but not one single one of them took even a sentence or two to remind their readers that CAP's projections assume a future reality of a fried planet. A future reality of a fried planet, which is another way of saying uh, major production in oil drilling uh, over the next 20 years. As everyone from Donald Trump to that pretty, that pretty boy up there in Canada puts the pedal to the metal on ramping up fossil fuel production over the next 20 years. Okay, here, here's one uh, that I have to admit did take me by surprise. Have we ever mentioned the shithole state of Delaware in, in one of these doomsday roundups? If, 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 you know, if I were to look at a list of 50 states that would that might be that might dodge some of this bullet it, it would probably be delaware uh would be heading the list oh well uh illusions do die hard hambone as we see this bizarre story from the washington post showing up i wonder why i'm not paywalled out of it oh i i, I at least get to read the first paragraph before the paywall hits okay delaware has been granted an emergency disaster designation by federal agriculture officials because of a difficult planting and growing season. Uh, farmers, uh, Deputy Secretary of the Delaware Department of Agriculture says farmers will be able to apply for federal assistance under the designation granted by the U.S. Agriculture Department. Jesus. Uh, anyway, Delaware, now a disaster area. Uh, okay, let's go from the shithole state of Delaware to the shithole country of Germany. Where we see this uh, little little headline buried somewhere deep on the science pages of the mainstream media today, tropical ticks threaten to bring Crimean Congo fever to Germany. Hmm. Do you think so? Crimean Congo fever is not something German residents have ever had to worry about. But that may be about to change after the discovery of tropical ticks known to be carriers of the disease. Uh, so these scientists over there in Germany said they have now found seven different species of tropical ticks uh, in the northern region of Lower Saxony previously. To, previous to 2018, only two tropical ticks were known to have been found in Germany. One was discovered in 2015, the other in 2017. Huh. 
rising temperatures are being blamed for the arrival of tropical ticks in the Central European state. Okay. From the shithole country of uh, Germany to the shithole state of Nevada, where I'm absolutely flabbergasted to read Nevada Water Chief rejects Big Vegas Pipeline pumping plan. Long sought plans for Las Vegas to pump and pipe drinking water from arid valleys just west of the Utah state line were dealt a severe blow on Friday with a ruling from Nevada's top state water official. State engineer Jason King effectively rescinded approvals granted since 2007 for the Southern Nevada Water Authority, groundwater rights, and vast rural tracts in Lincoln and White Pine counties. Um, so, this is all part of recalculating if there was enough water underground to supply the 250 mile pipeline. Uh, of course, the Water Authority is expected to appeal the uh, to appeal the uh, the ruling. Uh, officials in Las Vegas have projected the pump and pipeline project could cost billions of dollars, but have said it might be essential if drought keeps shrinking the Lake Mead Reservoir on the Colorado River. Uh, federal water managers said this week that a drier regional climate coupled with rising demand for water could drain the lake so much that cutbacks in water deliveries could begin for Arizona and Nevada by 2020. Lake Mead supplies 90% of Las Vegas drinking water. But we're going to uh, wrap up this part one climate change meltdown uh, roundup with this, I guess this is probably uh, anywhere on the planet, uh, but I think they're particularly talking about the U.S. and this story from the monthly review titled, No Empires, No Dust Bowls, Ecological Disasters and the Lessons of History. Okay, in case anyone on, on this channel is not aware of this, today we are living in a new Dust Bowl era defined by egregious levels of inhumanity and profound shifts taking place in the Earth's land, climate, and water systems. Like the 1930s Dust Bowl, contemporary ecological crises are associated with high levels of racialized, socialized, uh, racialized social inequality, imperiled, god damn it, imperiled ex, 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 imperiled expropriation, social dislocation, and fascist politics. Accordingly, scholars and scientists are now studying the 1930s disaster as an analog to our current period as they seek to understand the danger posed by climate change, land degradation, and freshwater scarcity. They are studying agricultural technology and practices, government policies, and migration patterns 
and they are warning us to be prepared. We are being warned to be prepared. And uh, let's just hope there's a porta potty for the end times when the tsunami of shit comes barreling down onto this planet. But I'm going to wrap up part one of today's Doomer Headlines climate change roundup rant and come back with a more flotsam and jetsam report about the various ways the planet is going straight into the porta potty. Uh, in part two, coming right up, and then I will change shirts and hats, get rid of the Humpty Dumpty Tribe shirt, and move over to uh, Collapse Chronicles to read Goodbye to Planet Earth by Chris Hedges, which really sums it all up. Goodbye, Planet. Bye, guys. Yes, little dog. Is he pop? I do not want to sit here and smell that shit and those damn chemicals. Bye, guys.